And this is the place I get on my horse and crawl under a tree and take that old saddle like them old cowboys and you get for a pillar to go to sleep hang on the road. When I go home, I... I want... I just tell you, I just want to be a Christian. I learned that a long time ago. I quit saying, God, my name's Jimmy. I had a brother named Jimmy. And I used to be upset because my name wasn't Jimmy because that's all he said. My name, Jimmy, I take all you give me. At the table, he bigger than me. He'd jump in and get the chicken leg and, and the chicken breast. And, and all I thought the chicken had was a neck. <laughs> And that part of that little wing. <laughs> That's all I knew a chicken had. Well, I hate to be more, I don't, I'm not much of a chicken eater. But if I'm going to eat chicken, I want a, a, a leg or a breast. You know? I had one brother say, uh, I'll take the back and the breast and all the rest. <laughs> That's about, that's, that's just generation, ain't it? It's a root hog or die poor. And I tell you, we're going to find out one day that it's going to take more than being a church member. More than being baptized in Jesus' name. It's going to take more to lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before I wake. You know, when I was growing up, all the kids learned that little prayer. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, but it's going to take more than that. Amen. It's going to take more getting up in the morning and say, Lord, give me this day and my daily bread. Lead me not in the way of temptation, but deliver me from evil, for you are to honor and the glory and the power forever. Amen. Right. You're going to find out that this looking like a Christian ain't good enough. The Pharisees, that they, they'd have won it right through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I always appreciate the Lord. I got a few end time scriptures here. I just, I believe the end is on us. I mean, I believe the end is on us. And I'm telling you, that now don't forget tonight will be one of the last services that we'll have to uh, maybe be taking our time that'll be on how, to, uh, how we feel tonight you know I'll try to go with the spirit sometimes you know if you receive it it ain't a, uh, so much the words you say. It's the, it's the act of faith. The evening that the Lord appeared to me when I was a little crippled boy at the foot of the bed dying. And he said, rise, get out of the bed and walk. And here I hadn't walked in six years and never am going to walk again. Not normally if I live. If I had to even at 11 years old, if I had to got my little skinny body out there and held on that bed post and, and made an effort, I'd have been somewhere. Mom and he lived down below Birmingham, a place called Eastville, down below that. I'd been down there somewhere beside my daddy laying in a grave. Where a lot of my older kin folks was buried. I'd been better off because if kids don't go to heaven, I ain't no me and you need to try it. The Bible said, Bible said we got to come as a little cheering. Even to get in the front door. 
you know. So uh, they must have better change than we do. <laughs> I, mean, I guess because they ain't got no sense yet, you know. <laughs> But I tell you, but and, and then the Bible says you got to become like that little child to even to get in. Get in. Amen. Didn't it? You got to become like a little child to even to get into the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of God within you is Christ in you. That's when you when, when you receive the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Ghost. That's God in you. And this year, other stuff, uh, fact, but there's a war out there on that. Oh, sometimes causes me tremble, tremble. Man, is out there. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you. You may not like this. Man, you act, look, walk. But your tongues are so long. Talking about when they stand on your mama's front doorstep every morning and lick the frying pan out in the kitchen. That's how the tongues of Pentecostal people and folks that's around here talking about one another. You know. And dead spiritually. I know you ain't going to give nothing now, and I know why if you don't. <laughs> but I tell you, God wants us to get woke up. The Lord's put out too many words. Sometimes it'll be, I won't get to the next place. Sometimes it will be three days. And ain't a time that that's been spoken. <laughs> That ever what God said would come to pass. And someone was telling me last night how some of these preachers, you know, they get them CDs and and then they go off and prophesy these signs and and they don't come to pass and they don't get them CDs for a week or two later. Well, that that's ours. Better leave uh, better leave anybody else's visions alone. Ain't that right? Yes, you better not be going out there making copy, trying to prove you're a prophet. Somebody come up there, where's the prophet at? I said, I don't know. I ain't, don't even know one of them guys. I was all these bunches out there, a bunch of false claimers just want to be something, you know? Man, you got to be called and chosen. And if we'd ever find what we was called for, I used to be a little old guy when I started out. He was a little bitty fellow, but he was a good preacher. He preached down below the Grange and Georgia and Noonan and back down that way. Past the little church of God down there. And his word was some people don't know what they made for. You know. They just jumped up there and wanted to be this. Never find out what they made for. You know. If you never find out what you made for. I don't care what one man said, Lord, just make me a doorkeeper. Let me stand at the door. I'd be happy. Just open the door. I guess that's the reason I love my wife so much. First time I've seen her, she was a doorkeeper. She was, I was holding revival in this church. Well, I, she'd come to the couple of meetings I sent her, but first time I really knew who she was, and my eyeball jumped out on my nose. I ain't got them back yet. But anyway. I thought to myself, Lord, God, who is that? Who is that woman? She was so sweet. She had uh, a man standing back there and a woman. She was a lady. And that church, when somebody come in, they, they walked them down the aisle and they seated them. 
You know, people don't do that no more. It's just dog eat dog now. Dog eat dog. That day she sat on this side, that service. One of my balls stayed on that side. <laughs> Next night she said on this side, I get people said it, and I thought to myself, you don't ask women how old they are. You can tell these old wrinkle up men, you know. <laughs> Been run over by tractors and <laughs> driving hammers and <laughs> painting. <laughs> And I was upset with myself. And I wasn't lustful, and I never have looked at a woman that way. And that used, that's the truth. But God kill me right now. He's never had that in my heart. Never have wanted to, to be with that kind of woman. That go to bed with this or that one. This ain't never been in my blood. Wasn't in my daddy's blood. Wasn't in my uh, seven uncles' blood. We just different kind of people, you know. And you know that whether you know it or not, that some I don't have some working in our day, but man, people used to be raised. Their daddy was an example. Ain't God good? So she sat on this side. After seeing the people, I said, "Lord, once of all, I done. My heart done been tore up too much." She looked to be about seventeen, eighteen years old. I said, "God, I cannot be <laughs> even thinking about somebody that young." Well, I tell you, I so I got to find out her age some kind of way. But you don't ask a woman how old she is. That is an insult. Well, ain't nothing happening here today. <laughs> but right, you, may not, you may think I'm dumb, but I'm a pretty smart fella when it comes to church. I got a way of finding out things. So I'm walking around and talking about beyond 2000. Lord, it give me a vision way back there what was going to be happening in our time, you know? And I was talking about 2010, 2017, things I saw in 2023. And folks done had me dead because I wasn't getting no rest. Now they're dead, you know, and that's the truth. They're dead dead. All them folks that had me cut me out, they done died. And ever where they gone, they gone. And some of them may be at the wrong place. You know, and I was seen, I was living, and, and him and all that other bunch and crouch and his bunch done had the world ended. First they had it ended in uh, uh, 87, and for some reason miscalculated, and so it's supposed to now take place in 88, when I recalculate, I met the man, one of the men that sat under me for a week and said, a word to God, I'd have known you before I wrote them two books. He made a million dollars out of it, but it was a lie. You know. You know, he, he said the world would come to an end. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Sure. But first place, he went and wrote, if he'd read the Bible, the Bible said, no man knows. Right. Didn't he? But anyway, he was a nice guy. He just got all, he just seemed to God preacher, just got it uh, like some of y'all, messed up. No victory, just dead, just run around here like a, a, a kundu and no life in it. You run a kundu in here and it won't have a bit of life in it, be running gas through it or kerosene through it or, or water or soap water through it, spraying. And, and that's the way some of you are. If you get a hold of God, you'll be more than a kundu. you have some anointing in you. Amen. 
And he sat under me in Little Rock. He was from Little Rock, Arkansas, where he was from. He said, I would have got out and met you before I wrote them books. And I took the scriptures. He said, I wouldn't have messed up so bad. You know. But he is coming. But now, and I, I, I saw, and folks thought I was crazy. He and all of them had the world ended. Crouch and all of them. People sold their houses and sent the money to them. I said, what are y'all doing that for? Man, if, if the church is going to be raptured out like they say, who's going to be spending that money I'll send up her? I said, that's the stupidest thing. And, oh, they said, there'd be a bunch of left behind. They're going to take up our ministry. That was crouch and hens all word. Ain't that stupid? They put that on the TV. They owned the television stations about then. And they put all that stuff out on TV. They're going to be raptured out. But the ones that's left behind are going to go right on preaching. <laughs> I tell you, if you left behind, where they're going to be? They're going to be praying to the rocks and the mountain. And ain't going to be that kind of rapture no how. Bible said every eye is going to see him. When Jesus come, that word rapture ain't even in the scripture never was. And it shall never be even connected with the Bible. Amen. Never should be used. If you use that word, you are false. Amen. That word rapture should not be mentioned. It's not in the scriptures. Never was in the scriptures. Never has been. The Bible said the trump of the Lord shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the living in Christ shall be changed. Then the weak are to be raised. That's what the Bible said. It ain't that other stuff. And every eye will see him. How can that they be raptured out and then they meet him in the air? Ever I shall see him, and every tongue shall confess. They shall be caught up with the Lord in the air to ever be Amen. with him. Amen. And there ain't gonna be no more comings. <laughs> That's it. And you'll not find nothing else in the scriptures. You want to come up here and fight about it, I say I'll get my glue and we'll see who gets up. Thank you, Jesus. Or if you want to get in here and say, let the Bible be truth, let me and all others that don't preach it be a liar. Would you reach over and say that to somebody? Let the Word of God be the truth. Let everything else that ain't lined up with the Word of God be a liar. Ain't that what the Bible said? Let everything else be a liar. And let God's Word, the Holy Bible, the King James Authorized Version of the Bible be the truth. Yeah. And that'll stand. But that's what they was teaching. And I told them, I told that whole crowd, that's the reason, part of the reason some of the church had broke from me. I said, you're going to find out I was sister and I, we got married and we was uh, uh, leaving. We hadn't had a change. I told her I'd take her to Australia. I really love Australia. They're begging me, came. My guy, I got right now about $10,000 or $15,000 in Australian money that a man brought me that, that to, to pay my way and her way when I come. Got it right now. Australian money is... Uh, worth three times what ours is. When I first went to Australia, Sister and I, it, uh, it took three of their dollars to get one of ours. Now, one of their dollars are worth three of ours. Since this good man y'all put up here in Washington. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, we really got us a good one, didn't we? <laughs> man, we got, a, we got a fellow who knows how to spend money and waste money. Like some of these preachers never get nothing done neither. Man, think about it. seven billion dollars now, twenty-two trillion. Seven billion dollars under Bush, twenty-two trillion under <laughs> in four years. I know a trillion is a thousand billion, and a billion is a thousand million. Man, I tell you, that's some money, ain't it? In debt. And they're out here, put you in jail if you don't pay your bills. They ought to put that whole bunch up there Amen. in jail, Amen. you know, because they're bigger crooks than you are. <laughs> Robin Yard. 
high. Let's praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Man, y'all throw that away. Don't put that on nothing. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I got a message here. You started up in a minute. Ain't God good? Come on, reach and praise God. Reach on, take somebody to shake hand and say, if you got a thousand dollars, you ought to help this gospel. You got a hundred dollars, but there are two people in here. God will bless you. You could. If you let God, you could give a thousand dollars. And God will bless you to help us. And what you give is to help us to get this gospel. Yeah.